today my guest is Muti. Welcome, Muti. Thank you. Good thanks for joining. Y'all. Yeah, Good thanks for joining us. So I want to um, introduce Muti a little bit. She's a very good friend of mine. We've been friends for about 14, 15 years yeah. and uh, practicing together and having lots of wonderful retreats together mm-hmm. yeah. and not seeing each other as much lately. But you know, when we touch in, it's just really amazing that it's as if no time has passed. So I feel very fortunate to um, have Mukti with us today. And she's going to, we're going to have a conversation about how this awakeness lives us. Mm. And perhaps we'll come up with pointers for that and share experience. But I'm going to turn it over to Mukti and see how she'd like to get going on that. Okay. It's a great topic. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I like that image of the sense of um, something living us. You know, it's it's a it's a beautiful one. Um, yeah, there's this sense when I think about that topic of you know what what is living. You know, right now, what is living, and not even in a personal way that I'm asking that question. Like, what is it for me to live? But just in this moment, what is alive? You know, how is life expressing? And it feels like the wakefulness part of that is uh, the sense that there's a knowing that who and what we are is not separate from life, that, that the wakefulness is the falling away of that sense of separation that constellates around a sense of personal self that may f- often feel separate from life. You know, and so um, it's amazing how subtle that can go. You know, even when we ask the question like, "How is life living us?" You know, there can sometimes be a sense of like, "We're here," and you know, life is somewhere else, um, and how that you know kind of moves through us. And and uh, often it's in those moments when all positions just fall away that life is known so intimately, so directly, that that, that sense of, of the two-ness is, um, is vanished. Mm. I like that. Yeah. Would you say that there's um, a particular way of practicing or pointers? Um, I know that with you, we've sat together a lot, and there's a very strong stillness. And I know stillness, allowing everything to settle into stillness, seems to be something that I gathered from you. Mm. Uh, just, you're, you're just such a wonderful example of that. And I'm wondering if that is, uh, if you would consider that one of your primary tools, or um, are there other things that have supported you along the way? Oh, that's a great question. Well, you, you've kind of called my number, right? But- <laughs> Like you, you um, have me, have me pretty well sized up because that's one of my favorite pointers in my teaching role too. Is is in really encouraging people to explore what stillness is, and part of the inspiration for that really came from listening to talks of Adyashanti and and how he, who's my husband also, and how he would speak of a sense of separate self, the the one who suffers, sometimes called the ego as a a movement of grasping and aversion Mm -hmm. so that that sense of someone at the center is is caused by this motion of like grasping for what we want and pushing away what we don't want and usually it's kind of simultaneous you know pushing away one thing that we don't want and you know simultaneously grasping for what we do and vice versa and so in that movement you know of of that consciousness that creates a sense of division and and uh, separation suffering uh, I could just feel energetically that that movement and, and instinctively the sense it was to explore stillness mm-hmm. as to come to know that which is not defined by these movements of grasping and aversion so um, that is a pointer I, I use quite a lot 
Um, I use it when I teach meditation um, in the way that I, I give instruction. It's, it's usually to encourage a, a relaxation of, of the energies that would be invested in grasping and aversion and, and a more direct knowingness of the, the bodily sense of stillness that remains that translates into an energetic knowing of stillness and into a sense of stillness becoming more and more uh, embodied and conscious you know, in, in us as individuals. So that you're right, that's a, that's a big pointer to me. There, I'm sure there are others um, that may come to mind in a moment, but um, why don't I leave it at that for the moment? Yeah, well, I really like what you said about, um, you know, I get that too, where the energies are, are settling. And I think when you speak about meditation, just like I do, there isn't really what we're doing is we're relaxing outside of the sense or beneath the sense or behind the sense of a meditator. You know, because it's mm, really yes. that the um, energy of pushing and pulling that creates that sense of separation. So even the feeling of a meditator. And mm. I feel through Adi Shanti also that um, I landed into that, you know, quite naturally, mm. you know, that, that whole sense of being the ground. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, you know, so maybe speak more about that because I think it's a really potent teaching how every part that actually feels separate because there can be parts that arise that perhaps were suppressed, didn't get acknowledged in the life, Mm -hmm. and that come forward, which is a lot of the work that we do in this course, you know, oh, okay. the, the embodiment, like really um, allowing unconscious material and allowing that which hasn't been seen because the resource wasn't there at whatever time, and then really letting that rise up mm. and how that gets um, integrated into the ground of being or stillness. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Well... So, what comes to my mind, you know, there's always so many different ways we could talk about these things, but what comes to mind uh, currently is that it feels like in this shift of momentum out of um, feeling like we're in the driver's seat, you know, <laughs> like I'm the one who's going to grasp for this or push this away or manage my experience and, and you know, track everything and vibe for position and all that, as that paradigm comes to rest, and meditation is a great arena to, for that to come to rest, you know, and settle. Um, and that which remains, the sense of ground, as you call it, um, we could g give that the attribute of stillness. Um, it doesn't mean there's not a lot of life and vitality there. There's actually a lot that's going on there, but it feels that it's um, it can be free of a sense of the self that is is vying for position and and in that um, it feels like one of the qualities of that ground as you call it or that stillness is that it's very harmonizing mm. and it's it can feel very into the body it can register as very spacious because um, the body doesn't feel so confined or pushed and pulled by those other movements so as a result the body can feel a lot more free and the senses and and one's mind that would be have been preoccupied with tracking things you know, gets freed up and it can sort of map to a greater sense of wholeness and connection with through the senses with life around us and with the quiet and and with that settling and stillness and in that spacious quietude of being, there, there seems like, it feels like there's this invitation that gets transmitted, this opportunity or, or environment, which things that have felt suppressed or um, contracted or held, they respond to that sense of space that, uh, that starts to feel more highlighted or brighter as the energy that had been tied up in all of the management gets freed up 
it transfers to that sense of spacious quiet and almost feels like it brightens it and activates it, makes it more um, alive or more um, gives it more gravitas or, or something that shifts the weights of balance. And then it almost feels like the contracted parts respond to that, like, oh, there's all this room to stretch out in, and it's so quiet, maybe I'll actually, <laughs> you know, come to surface and be able to be seen and felt and, and experienced without distractions of all these other desires and, mm-hmm. and agendas. And so it, it just feels like somehow that, that ground, as you call it, um, is, is just this, this perfect stage that's set for that availability and um, opportunity to be present for all that's been held back. Yeah, yeah, and I would say it definitely carries a quality of kindness. You know, uh-huh. like you said, like that invitation, it's, it's, it's friendly and it's warm. And I think that what that does, it invites us to really carry it. I mean, or it carries us, however you want to look at it, but it's applicable to life then. So, so what happens, say, if you have a practice of stillness, mm-hmm. it's not just at a, at a time that you set aside for stillness. Mm-hmm. It actually, as you start to give yourself to it more, that it enlivens all of the life, you know, from a space of quiet, although you can be fully engaged. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. One thing I've noticed about that kindness is that um, it feels especially when that silence, how, how I register it in my system, when that sense of silence and stillness feels very registered in the area of the heart, mm. um, it feels like that kindness variable comes forward more. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes when it's very kind of earth and still settling and how that registers in the body, sometimes it can kind of almost draw um, magnetically into a sense of quietude of being that's, that's very, um, uh, that's so still that it doesn't necessarily feel like it moves as kindness. Um, but when it comes from the heart, it can feel more kind. But even, even if the heart feels less engaged and there's that quietness, there's that feeling of that unconditional presence, which could be called kindness. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's just that available, um, ever-present constancy that just has all the time in the world for whatever would want to come up and tell its story or... Um, work its way into um, consciousness or out of suppression. Yeah, yeah, I think that's really right. And I, I really love exploring the territory of the heart, and it seems like I do that a lot with people in our courses. Uh, yeah, great. And um, there's a real physicality to it. And what mm. I've discovered over the time that it seems that there's this... Um, space behind the physical heart that actually Mm -hmm. gets opened up it's almost as if you know our emotional life you know can kind of pocket itself in different places in the body but there seems to be that that place behind the back like the mid upper back that um really starts to open Mm -hmm. and soften and it's almost as if you know, with that is a widening. It's, it's uh, like a capacity that starts to really be able to include. Mm-hmm. You know, it has this inclusive quality. And I think that, you know, as far as the living, the enlightened living or the living awake or having this live you, whatever it is, I think that that's really the part because we're including everything, you know, we're letting all of the uh, babies come back home. (laughs) You know, the ones that didn't get attended to, you know, Uh they can come come back home to mama. Uh And, you know, it it feels to me in in my experience and with people, it feels a lot like that. But like just what you're saying, when it's 
more to the ground, it's um, gets so quiet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, 